my brothers and sisters in Christ, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and redeemer. I thank the Lord for another day, for who he is, for letting my golden moments roll on a little while longer. And you know, you know, I've been talking to people. Uh, I went to a funeral today. Uh, Got to go to one the next Thursday. And uh, when I think about just how the emotion that's caught up in death, um, how as I look around and see that people don't have any hope and the Lord just led me that I need to get some words of encouragement and somebody need to know that death died at the cross. And I'm thinking from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, the 55th verse, it says, Grave, where is thy victory? Death, where is thy sting? See, Jesus conquered death when he died on the cross. When we lose loved ones, we get to the point we don't, we miss those birthdays, those anniversaries, uh, those kind words. We may go in that bedroom where they slept and look and see there's a void there, there's an empty space. But Jesus, when he died, not only did he give us a right to eternal life, but death died at the cross as well. Somebody need to know that. Somebody is hurting when they don't know which way to go. When it seems like when you close that casket that there's nothing else. Like, it's so final. But, oh, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. God covered that a long time ago. You got to understand that death died at the cross. And I just want to tell you how it died. It started with Judas giving Christ a kiss. The Roman soldiers grabbed him, led him to a prison, put him before Pilate. Pilate could find no fault in him. They wanted to know who should be freed, Christ or Barabbas. They said free Barabbas. Christ stayed there. They led him up Golgotha Hill. Carrying his cross that was so heavy that Simon of Serene offered to carry it for him. When they took him up Calvary Hill, when they pushed his back against the cross, stretched him out and hung him up high, drove spikes in his hands and in his feet, put a crown of thorns on his head, said that they pierced him in his side and blood and water came out. But even in that, he looked and seen that there was two thieves on either side of him. One said, he saved others, but he can't save us. And he can't save himself. The other one said, we're here for what we did, but this man has done no wrong. And he said, remember me when you come into thy kingdom. Jesus stopped death to say, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. It says that he stood there and he looked and he looked down on the Roman soldiers and said, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. He looked around again, seeing his mother. And the disciple John, who loved him, he said, Behold thy mother, behold thy son. He said, I thirst. He said, O oh Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Then he said, 
It is finished. Then he looked to his father in heaven and said, Into thy hand I commend my spirit. And he said, It is finished. He was talking about death was finished as well. So let me tell you something that somebody need to know that death died at the cross. Somebody need to know that when you feel you can't go on, when you look in that empty room or sit across that dinner table and see that empty chair where your loved one used to sit, when you go to pick up that phone and realize that you can't call that person anymore. Know that the Bible says, death, where is thy victory? Grave, where is thy victory? Death, where is thy sting? It says that we're going to another place where we can live with Christ the King. Oh, let me tell you, brothers and sisters in Christ, when you know who Jesus is, that you don't ever have to say goodbye. When they close that casket, it's only I'll see you later. Job said it the best. Though my body be eaten with worms, I know that my Redeemer lives. Job said it is once appointed. A a woman born of a man is a, a man born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. But God specializes in renewal. You got to say, death may trouble you here. But it can't follow you home, brothers and sisters. Oh, I think about all of the death that I experienced. Burying my mom. Burying aunts, uncles, cousins. Friends, looking at classmates that didn't make it to reach 54 years old. But I'm so glad about it that Jesus stayed on that cross. And when he gave us eternal life, it meant death had no power over us. It had no sting. It says, grave, where is thy victory? Death, where is thy sting? You ought to know, brothers and sisters, that as long as you got King Jesus, you don't need nobody else. It said he stayed there for three days. I don't know the significance of the three days he stayed there. But I'm going to put it in my own words. I would say it would be one for the Son, one for the Father, and one for the Holy Spirit. But that third day, he got up with all power in his hands. Uh, He said that heaven and earth has been given to me. I have the authority that my Father gave me. So you ain't got to worry about death. (laughs) When you're crying in the midnight hour, longing for that one to call on, just one more chance to say a kind word. The things that you wanted to say, but you never got a chance to. Those places that you used to go. Oh, you can't go there with that person anymore. I just want somebody to be encouraged. (laughs) Ones that lost children, ones who lost spouses, mothers, fathers, 
Oh, bloodshed in the streets. There are more parents burying their children because of the senseless violence that's going on in this world. But let me tell you something. When you know Christ Jesus, you can look at death in a different light. Because you can say, death, oh death, you bother me here on this earth. But you can't follow me home. Because my Jesus paid it all in full. He took the lean of death off my life. I don't have a death sentence anymore. And as long as I live, I'm going to praise him. Till I can't praise him anymore. Oh, brothers and sisters, be encouraged knowing that when your loved one has went to the other side, just make sure that you got a seat in God's kingdom, that you can meet your loved ones, <laughs> that you're going to go to the other side. Realize that when we close our eyes on this earth, no matter how you go out, if you go out in your sleep, through sickness or accident, realizing that the only thing that's being destroyed is this corruptible body, but you're going to put on incorruptible if you know Christ Jesus. I just want somebody to be encouraged. My nieces, they're going through something. As they buried their aunt today. <laughs> Got to bury a, a cousin next week. We all have had to bury our parents. People have to, had to bury children. Just couldn't understand. Don't know how they was going to go on without their babies. Remembering the time. The first diaper change. <laughs> the first time. They walked. <laughs> when you took them to kindergarten or to the first grade, <laughs> took them to Sunday school, <laughs> all those memories seem to have died. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Memories never die. You keep that legacy alive. And knowing that death has no sting. The grave has no victory because God sent his only begotten son that who shall ever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. <laughs> I know one of these old days <laughs> I'm going to pick up my wings. I'm going to fly away and be at rest. <laughs> I learned a long time ago to look at death differently. Oh, let me tell you something. God don't want you to be disheartened. He does not make mistakes. You may un not understand, Lord, why my child? But let me tell you something. It's God's permissive will. God allows things to happen. And take this comfort. As you know, Job... He had to bury all ten of his children. Oh, it's bad enough to have to bury one. But to have ten funerals. <laughs> never to see your child again. But it said he held on. And the story of Job said he cursed the day he was born. But he never cursed God. He said, the Lord give it. And the Lord take it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm just here to tell you. That death died. On the cross. And Jesus defeated death. He defeated the hell and the grave. And I hope. This is encouraging to someone. Because there are so many people hurting. A young man on there said that he lost his brother. His, his brother was complaining of chest pains. By the time he got to the doctor, his brother was gone. 
Let me tell you, it don't matter how much money you have, how good looking you are, you got to leave this place. <laughs> so it behooves you to have your house in order, that you will be able to see your loved ones again. But I wanted to encourage someone, through your tears, if you can look and see that death is not final. When they close their eyes on this side and they know Christ, they wake up on the other side. And there's a great supper waiting for us at the Lord's table. We just have to get ourselves ready. Like I said, when we go to funerals, that funeral is not for the dead. It's for the living. But how you react to it, how you cope with it, is knowing who you are in Christ. That there is not death. The word in Matthew says, some won't see death, which means some of us are going to be raptured away. We look forward to the rapture, but when we have to close our eyes on this side, knowing that God has already made a more excellent way, when Jesus died on the cross, as the video I did yesterday, it was not the nails that held him there. But just be encouraged to know that death died at the cross. I want to thank each and every one of you, Minister Laura Spate, praying, knowing that it's not easy. I lost my mother, lost my sister, so I understand death. I to tell you, trouble don't last always, and death was defeated at the cross. Minister Laura Spate, thank each and every one of you. May the peace of Jesus be with you. God bless.